Welcome to Outside the Games, uh, to our show. Thank you so much for coming in. We have a great guest with us uh, today. It's uh, Ariana Silva. She's class of 2023, dual sport athlete. Yes, folks, she is. Basketball as a guard and then softball as pitcher in first base. Uh, she goes to Pittsburgh High School in California. With GPA of 3.3, Ariana Silva. Thank you so much for coming to out into Outside the Games and being on our show. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Great to have you, nice to have you. Can't wait to get, get ready and discuss a lot of great things. Uh, of course, here on our show, Outside the Games, uh, we're gonna start here with family because we believe that family is your foundation. How would you define family and why, Ariana? I would define family as, honestly, just the people around you that love and support you. They don't always have to be blood. They just are people that always want the best for you and will push you to be your best no matter what. So. Great, great definition. No, that's a good definition. And, and in the family, you have uh, two parents, uh, a mom and a dad. And so they, they play just an influential role in making sacrifices, helping you out, uh, supporting you as a student athlete, uh, more so too as, as, a, as a daughter, their daughter. So uh, take us through, with, let's start out with mom first. Uh, what does mom do for you to help you be the best student athlete possible? I feel like my mother is mostly on my emotional side of my sport. So like if I have a bad game, I know I could go to her and I could talk to her and she knows sports and everything, but I feel like she's more of, I need to make sure my child is right in the mind before they're like going out there and like performing and stuff. So if I'm having a bad game, I'll just go be like, hey mom, can we just like go drive and something? And she'll be like, yeah, sure. So she's there and she supports me no matter what so that it's good to have someone there that's like just knows what I need that I don't know what I need if that makes any sense because she knows what I need sometimes and I'm just like did not know I needed that <laughs> but here no, we are. That, that, makes, that makes complete sense because they know who you are they know and I'm sure she's observant to know I mean oh yeah she, you're her child so she knows yeah. that you're going to need at the right time and, and to be there to comfort and give you encouragement. Uh, what about your dad? How does your dad help you be the best student athlete possible and give you support? Oh, my father is amazing. He always, ever since I was little, he would always tell me I could do anything I wanted, anything athletically, academically, just anything. So always having that confidence and it's like someone I know also knows me and knows my potential and he always he he plays sports he knows like every single sport so if I wanted to get into something new he'd be 100% supportive about it and will learn about it and he also is the one who takes me and pays for all my stuff so <laughs> That's, that's also where he helps. Well, he has an open wallet. <laughs> <laughs> he has an open wallet to spend on, on, on his daughter. So that's great. No, that's awesome. A good support structure. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have an older brother. Oh, nice. He's, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> Sibling rivalry, right? Is he still at home with you? Um, yeah, actually. He's, he turned, he's about to turn 19. He, um... He did play sports. He played baseball for a very long time and water polo, actually, which is a very hard sport. Um, another example of my parents always being supportive in anything we want to do because we knew nothing about the sport. My brother's like, I want to play water polo. And we were like, cool. All right, let's go. Like go for it. And, and, and there's something about water polo is the buoyancy. Uh, you got to stay afloat yeah. for a long period of time. I don't know it's about it. It's insane. <laughs> It's it's crazy. Like I went to his practices. I'm like, they can't touch the floor, and they're in there for like two hours. Like, what? It's crazy. Wow, wow, that's interesting. Well, uh, so getting to you know, there's the family part of it. Your mom and dad, your brother, they play a good support role for you, and and giving you know giving you encouragement and helping you. Um, so that's huge. Uh, and you have a you have the the basic necessities: uh, food, shelter, a, a roof over your head. So again, things not to take for granted, right? 
yeah. Um, let's look at the fact of mentorship. Mentorship is huge. It uh, plays a, 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 a very big role in a student athlete's life. It's a big impact. Who are your mentors and why, Ariana? I have a lot of mentors, actually. I've, I have, ever since I was little, for both basketball and softball, I've had specific trainers that my parents have known for years and trust and know that they have my best interest and they um, they're, want the best for me and they know what they're talking about too. So th those are people that I've, I like, I know, I know want good for me. <laughs> I keep on saying the same thing. Um, but those people, I know I could go to them whenever. I have my best friend and her family, her whole family, love them. I have lots of teachers. So thankful that I've always had really good teachers that are always, I could talk to them about anything, even if it isn't school. And just honestly, coaches, teachers, and friends and family, just a lot, a lot of people around me. I always try to surround myself with very good people. So I've been very thankful to have I, just everyone that supports me. I think a couple of words that come to mind and what I'm hearing is the fact that you have, uh, you surround yourself with good people, okay? And you have a variety of mentors. Yeah. Looking at school, uh, we'll talk about Pittsburgh, California, high school. Yeah. Now, interesting, you attended, you were talking to me about this earlier off camera. Uh, we were talking about Liberty High School as your freshman year. Uh, and then you transferred for now your sophomore year to Pittsburgh. Why the yeah. transfer? And, and, and what went into that? Because again, transferring schools is not an easy thing. But to, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it early. Why the, why the transfer? Yeah. Um, so my parents, both my parents actually graduated from Pittsburgh High School and just where the school was. So freshman year, my grandpa, uh, my grandfather helps a lot with their football team and Friday nights, me and him would go to games over there and I would step on the field and it just, I just felt at home there. And I was like, I've never felt this way about a school ever. And it's like the whole community, the, the whole city is very, that's the only high school in that city. So everyone supports that school and everyone in that area is just, they're very community oriented and stuff. So it, that whole place just, I just feel so much like love and everyone always looks out for each other there. And it was just something I told my parents, I was like, I really like it over here. And they're like, yeah, that's how it was when we went to high school there. And I was like, I wanna be a part of that. And so we, I had to talk with my dad and he was like, okay, we'll, we'll transfer. So I was like, cool. And then here I am. <laughs> and it's just so cool. Actually, even Pittsburgh High's band is phenomenal. They were actually on ESPN, um, ESPN's Instagram, or they posted something cause they were playing, I got five on it. And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, that's my school right there. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, just the school. I just just the feeling of being there, I love it. Ariana, the teacher and student relationship at Pittsburgh High School is an important thing. And you kind of highlighted a little bit how the teachers support the academics and the, 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 the athletics at Pittsburgh High School. What's your take on, on, on how important a teacher and student relationship is in, 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 in high school? I feel like a teacher and student relationship is very, very big because there's, Personally, um, there's so many teachers in my life that since first grade, literally my first grade teacher made a very good impact on me. And that's being that young. And just throughout my whole time, just being in school. And I feel like it's, it's good to, to trust your teacher because first off, they're teaching you obviously, and to be successful when you get older. So you have to you have to trust them and that they that they want the best for you. And when your teacher is interested in you and respects you and gives you your time and lets you talk and just have like a free like mind, like thinking and lets you explore and stuff like that, I feel like that's amazing because they're letting you grow and not just sticking to what they want you to learn and stuff like that. So thankfully my, my teachers 
all of my teachers have been amazing and even the strictest ones actually the strictest ones in my opinion were my favorite <laughs> because I knew I knew they were like okay yeah we could talk about this and stuff but you have to get this done and that just helped me stay structured in school and it was, it was it's cool having people that aren't your parents but aren't your I love my coaches but aren't my coach so then like some teachers don't even know I play sports and it's just cool to be like I'm just another student to you like I'm not just an, an athlete I'm just I'm a student to you I, I think the key thing here is flexibility but flexibility that uh, to an extent right because I think yeah. you have to be flexible as a teacher with the student but I also think that you have to be somewhat strict and say hey we have a task we got to complete it let's get it done right yes uh because flexibility can lean into procrastinating <laughs> i can go oh, there yes <laughs> we'll get into student athlete challenges soon but but to, to highlight do you believe it's it's important to be vocal with the the teacher though because sometimes what happens is and you, you can even hear this from a coach and player perspective that a coach finds it easier for a player to be vocal with them so they know how the the, the player feels well same thing for this for the teacher teacher needs to know how the student feels you think that's an important piece to, to academics oh yes for sure because like say if you don't get something in class I've had I've just been straight up with teachers and been like I don't understand what we're learning like I'll just go after class and they'll try to tie it into something in my my life like I've had teachers I'll be like I don't understand this topic right now and my seventh grade, I think, language arts and social studies teacher knew I played sports, and I'm a Yankees fan, and he tied it with baseball and Yankees, and I was like, I was like, I understand it now. I was like, thanks, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it, no, that's a powerful thing. That's a powerful tool. Teachers, if you're listening, that's a yes. powerful tool in which teachers can use something that if and, 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 and I think really when you look at it, yes, they got a whole class to teach, but if they can pinpoint individuals, individuality is huge. You pinpoint individuals and saying, I know what I can get out of that person by bringing something that they can familiarize themselves. Yes. It gets the person to learn. That's a powerful tool. Uh, let me be clear about yeah. that. I think that's that's huge. Um, with With the teachers, now it's always a thing of where, you know what? I need to be successful at my academics. I mean, you're holding a 3.3 and being a dual sport athlete at that, that is not easy. That is not easy. Speaking from a student athlete that I've been playing two sports, it's hard. How, how do you get the best out of, so for you as a student, you have to have characteristics about yourself, the way you are academically to make the teacher yeah. successful. In, which way, in what way, Ariana, do you do that? So like, especially right now during COVID, we're doing school online and a lot of students, they won't turn on their cameras, they won't talk. And I'm just like, guys, like we have, like I see people complaining all the time on like Snapchat and Instagram. I'm like, it goes both ways. The teacher is trying, it's, they have their cameras on, they're making these plans. You have to, you have to be open and you have to learn. And people are like, I'm not learning anything from distance learning. I'm like, you're not learning because you don't want to it's it's not hard it it is to get the motivation to sit up sit here and do your work and listen and not look around and it's so easy just to go on your phone and it, it takes a lot and I understand that but you have to you have to participate in class and every single day when I get in the class I unmute my mic and say good morning good afternoon hi I will like privately message my teachers like they're always asking how we are and I'm like how are you like is anyone asking how you are and sometimes they're not that they're not okay but they're they just tell me they're like you know I have a lot of things going on like one of my teachers someone passed away and I was like if you need anything I'm here like you just need to talk and I'm like I know I'm just a student but like it's just someone to talk to and like yeah, they're going to be there for you and it's cool and they're there for you, but you also have to be there for them because they're also human. They make mistakes. Like they, things go on in their life. And also just in class, you have to participate and just be willing to learn. 
can't forget about that. I mean, really, as a student, you have to think about, you know, students have to put themselves in the teacher's position in a way yeah. to understand it, to really get it in their head, why it's important for them to possess good qualities to help and aid the teacher to be successful. Other way around, though, what does a teacher have to possess in order for you to be successful? That's big. I mean, they have to possess a lot to do. I mean, they got a lot on their 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 lesson plan. They got to be specific yeah. sometimes to the student or a, and student athlete uh, to help them yeah. be successful. What do they have to do? Um, a lot of times, I when I talk to teachers, if they have like heavy workloads and stuff, I'll explain to them and I'll be like, "Hey, Mister, 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 so and so," I'll be like this is a lot of work and I will get it done. And I'll, I will say like, if I don't get it done to the best of my ability, tell me. And I, I want them to give me good like feedback on things that I'm doing. And if I, I don't want them to always be like, oh yeah, you're doing so good. And like, I like fail an assignment. I'm like, no, <laughs> please like tell me, like be honest with me. Like I want to better myself. And I, if if I'm at school and I have to go to school, I'd rather do as good as I can and get like graduate with like a good grades and stuff instead of being like oh yeah I have to be here and then just like fail it all and so like I have to be here I'm gonna do good <laughs> so I want them to be just honest with me and tell me if I'm doing something wrong like oh yeah no that's horrible <laughs> like I'll be like okay I'll fix it it's cool <laughs> like oh, perfect no I get it uh something we'll, we'll touch on something though is Student athletes, you've got to keep, I, we, we talked to a student athlete about this and, 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 and it didn't hit me until she said it. She said this, she goes, keep your camera on. I mean, oh, yeah. have your camera on. Now get it, you gotta go use the restroom and you gotta grab something to eat or whatever, turn your camera, I mean, that's just etiquette, right? But yeah. you have your camera on because that is how the teacher connects to you. Yeah. It, it, Cause you're not in class, so they can't see you. And attendance, yeah. everything when you check in for Zoom. So attendance is huge, folks. I mean, student athletes, that's part of your grade. That they're, and they're hitting that home. They're hitting that hard. Yeah, it's like just like just having your camera on will stop you from sitting down on your phone and being like, oh, yeah, because then the teacher will call you out and you don't want them to see. And so it's easy. I just just throw my phone in the back or just have it on the side because sometimes my mom will text and go, you want some food? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> So we have here with us uh, class of 2023, Ariana Silva. She is uh, a basketball and uh, softball athlete. Part of the Lady Hoyas, we don't wanna forget about that as well. So she attends Pittsburgh High School with a 3.3 GPA. We'll be right back. When your only competition is yourself, every challenge is only yours to lose or win. Theragun has changed the game for me. I'm Amanda Anasimova. I'm a professional tennis player from Miami, Florida. The Theragun is really good in the mornings because it helps me increase blood flow and prepare for my practices, especially when I'm pretty sore from the previous day. After I finish my matches during a competition, I love using the Theragun because I've been running around for so many hours and it just relieves a lot of the tension and I'm ready to go the next day. You don't go into life only thinking about the win. You focus on making history. It's time to think bigger. I wouldn't trust anyone else but Theragun. Well, welcome back to our show at Outside the Games. Here we have Ariana Silva. Class of 2023, dual sport athlete. Yes, folks, she's playing two sports. Keeping that GPA at 3.3, dual sports she's plays basketball as a guard, and of course, as a pitcher in first base in softball. Uh, of course, Pittsburgh High School is where she goes. And she's part of the Lady Hoyas AAU basketball team. A lot on her plate. Ariana, we get into the student athlete challenges part of this interview. We're gonna talk about some of those challenges. What are some of them that you face trying to be a dual sport athlete, hold a 3.3 GPA, AAU, being a daughter, <laughs> home life? There's a lot. How do you handle yeah. all that? So I, before COVID, it was a lot easier because, you know, I had my set school time. I had set practice times and it was just, it was just there. And 
it's something I loved and it was it was easier but then once COVID hit it was more so many more things got added and, and not to say that I don't love it because I love it very thankful for everything I have and it's it's like I just need more motivation because instead of getting up I'm like okay I gotta go to school like look like dress nice I would like that that was not my motivation but me getting up and I feel like everyone during these COVID times needs more motivation so just in this time right now it's a little bit harder to be like okay this is what I need to do and I still get it done but it might take a while if that makes any sense well it's time management you you don't want to procrastinate uh there's a lot of time on your hands so even more so some tools you're going to mention become a big, big piece to what, how you manage that time. But oh, yeah. I think the also too, the motivation, yeah, getting dressed for school and being on your, on your way out, heading to school, that is what got you up. Now yeah. it's kind of like, okay, now I'm getting ready for a Zoom class. Uh, yeah. I'm checking in. Uh, my mom is giving me food. She's texting me to let me know, <laughs> are you hungry? So yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of what I, the word I think I would use here is isolation. You're a little oh, bit isolated, sure. right? But due to COVID. So I know there's hybrid learning. I know that's, that's an option for a lot of student athletes to have two days on, uh, three days off or three days on, two days off. However, that schedule looks like, but that's, that's really a lot of it though, isn't it? I mean, you have to manage your time what tools do you use, Ariana, to be able to handle everything and to be motivated to get things done? That's actually amazing. So back here, I have a whiteboard. <laughs> and each day, like, I think that, that one's, yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it goes all the way down. And I have my times and what I have. So, like, I have my set school times, and then each color is a different practice. And then I even have added in time for like me and my friend, we best friend, we both play basketball together. And every Friday we'll go to uh, high school and we'll just ride our bikes there, run the bleachers. And I have set time for that. Like I've set time for everything. Like even my free time, my um, like whatever blank there is, I can add another practice or something. And like, just I just like to write things out and just have it up there and every so often I'll even write it on paper just so I just engrave it in my mind like hey this time I have this this time I have this and just just writing things out is amazing you're a visual person you did say that I mean you're a visual person you have to see things uh, that they're there and then for you to kind of look at them and say okay I've accomplished this you scratch it out and you're you're able to reset a new a new uh item of what you need to accomplish that day but I also look at this, you know, the student athlete, one student athlete said this, they said, you know, it, it, it may be a situation of where I, when I want to do something that's non-academic, non-training, I'm making time for that time to go to like the mall or spend time yeah. with my friend. I have a little open time there. I can schedule that. I can put, hey, hang with friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like usually I, Sundays, I try not to have any practices because just I need a break because I'm practicing multiple times a day for the rest of the week. So Sundays is my time. I like to give it to my grandparents because, you know, family first. And like that, that is my time. Like just can't actually came from my grandma's house <laughs> and um, like just, I'm, it's easier just to see it and just be like, okay, that I get free time now, or now I get to just watch Netflix or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, Ariana, with the tools that we have, we have a plethora of tools. Like we have uh, options to us, variety of ways that we can use tools. Sometimes it's like, okay, well, you have that whiteboard, the easel board back there. You can write stuff down. It's there visually when you go to your room. But how does the phone work with that? How do you sync up the phone to kind of, because you carry the phone where you go. So yeah. you don't have this easel board. You're not carrying it everywhere you go to remember what yeah. you do. Maybe you take a screenshot with your phone. Take, take me through what you do to take things with you when you're out and about. Uh, how do you remember some of those very things you have to do? 
it's actually the way I do it is weird. Other than my AAU practices, we have an app called Shutterfly and the coach, anything, anytime we have something, he updates it. So then it goes to my calendar on my phone and I'll get notifications. And so that's one thing. And the other thing I, I, to set up all my practices, all my, anything, I text my coaches. I have all my coaches numbers. So if I wanted to go train tonight, I could just text my coach and be like, hey, you want to go like shoot tonight or something? And it's actually easier for me. So it's not going through my parents and it's not like I forget it. And I could see on my phone the time I have to go. And if I go and text my mom something and like, say I text my mom something tonight and I see, oh, I was texting my basketball coach today. I'll just tap it. And then, oh, we have practice tomorrow. Okay, cool. So it's just right there. And then if one of us messes up, we can go back and be like, oh, see, you messed up on the time. And then it, it's, it's funny. And that's just, it's hard for my parents to understand how I do it, but I still get everything. And they're like, why don't you just write that stuff out? And I'm like, it's right there. Like, why do I have to? Yeah, well, and also too, you're trying to share the schedule with them, right? So they're, you're like saying, okay, oh, yeah. here's access to my schedule. You have it. You know what I'm doing. Uh, that way there's no question. Uh, but it's also asking them to learn how to use technology. I mean, this, this, these are all, this is technology that aids a student athlete in order to keep organized and prepared. That's big uh, because when the next level in college, you have to do these very things, if not more so. Yeah, for sure. Like just texting my coaches on my own. I started doing that like, I don't know how old I was when I started doing that within like the last like four years. And like my parents have built trust with my coaches. So like like sometimes we're in group chats and then we'll be like oh yeah we have this my dad would be like no you have this I'm like yeah but I could do that and then it's it's a whole thing and it's it's honestly easier to me that I have everything set out and then I feel obviously that's helping me from when I get older and like I feel like oh I have control over my own life cool <laughs> uh, let's talk about Pittsburgh high school go back to that in a sense uh how, do you feel that, that that alumni come back to Pittsburgh High School and really show a lot of support to the students? You said the crowds are big. So there, there has to be alumni in all sports that come back and show a lot of love to, to, the, to the current uh, sports teams and, and, the, and the high school itself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like my, my parents went there. My grandparents, my dad's parents went there. And just there's so many people that go and then they're all wearing their letterman jackets from like years ago and i'm like whoa like you guys still have those and like it's some, still, some of the people don't fit. even have <laughs> yeah <laughs> some of the people don't even have kids there and it's like they just go for the school and obviously our football team being like amazing helps and like a lot of them go to like d1 colleges and stuff and I see people just all the time. Everyone in Pittsburgh just reps Pittsburgh stuff all the time. And I'm like, yes, I love it. <laughs> How do you view media, Ariana? I view it as, in the sport world, something very positive. Um, in regular life, I don't like it. I have it, but I try not to be on it. But sports-wise, like Twitter. Um, Twitter I dedicate to basketball 100% I barely post anything like more personal on there which I will be starting soon because you guys should know me um, <laughs> like that helps a lot because the way it is on Twitter if someone likes something then whoever like they're following could see that they liked it or like retweeted it and that could get people more exposure to other colleges and other coaches and stuff so like even my friends now I have a few coaches that follow me and I will like like and retweet their things and comment and like at them on things and I'll be like hey guys go check out my teammates like they're good like follow them too and stuff like that so in that way it's very positive and other even other people I just see on just like Twitter and I'm like oh this girl's good and I like her things and then later I see like some people that followed me follow her now I'm like cool that's amazing like I'm glad I could like help with that and other people same thing with me too like 
people with more followers will like my stuff and then I get more followers I'm like thank you oh <laughs> well and, and that's and that's a positive way see that's the thing Ariana is that you look at media of how it can be something that's positive because again with the positive there's negative right and so there are some things on the negative that are there on Twitter. Uh, there is a uh, many, some student athletes don't understand this uh, way filter. You can filter out sensitive content. So there is a yeah. filter on there. Coaches understand as well that Twitter is being used for student athletes. They're seeing stuff. So a lot of times you've heard, hey, what you post can make it or break it when it comes to potentially having an uh, 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 an opportunity to go to that college true yeah true I've talked to schools and stuff and they they would they would say like be careful what you post and like they'll ask for my social media and I wish I would be positive on my social media so I'm like and my parents are on there I have family on there and I'm not a type of person to go and just like hate on people or post anything bad so I'm always like, yeah, go ahead, have it. My parents go through my phone. They know my password. So I'm like, you guys can go through my social media. Cool. Well, I tell you, we're having some fun uh, fun discussion here with Adiana Silva, class of 2023, basketball and softball, Pittsburgh, California, Pittsburgh High School in California, 3.3 uh, GPA, part of Lady Hoya's AAU team. Um, we'll be right back. The time is coming for us to get out and go again, to visit all the places we didn't know meant so much but we're all going at our own speed. At Enterprise, peace of mind starts with our complete clean pledge, curbside rentals, and low-touch transactions. With so many vehicles of so many kinds, you can count on us to help you get everywhere you want to go. Again, whenever you're ready, we're ready for you. Enterprise. We have Ariana Silva. She is a class of 2023 dual sport athlete, softball and basketball part of Lady Hoya's AAU basketball team. She holds a GPA of 3.3 out of Pittsburgh High School in California. Uh, so, hey, Ariana, we get into the aspect of your sports, the dual sports you play, basketball and, 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 and softball. First of all, what is it about those sports? Do you feel that there's some comparison when you play those sports? And there's some contrasting things as well. Take me through what those things are. So some, some of the things that I learned in softball are like obviously footwork, footwork in softball and basketball. That is something that ties together very well. Um, and something that contrasts a lot is like just the muscles you use. So I will go from like playing basketball for like a month and then like my whole time is taken up by basketball. And then I'll go and I'll have free time for softball. And the next day I'm sore. I'm like, why and then it took it took me a while to realize I'm I'm doing something completely different different movements different muscles and it's it, it, that, that part I'm like why can't it be the same thing because like I was just working out this whole month and now I'm sore <laughs> like it, that. It, Ariana is there different training that's involved in those though because I mean you talk about we're seeing girls and and, and female student athletes getting in the weight room more they're doing more yeah. training. Uh, they feel that, hey, I got to get my body right for these particular sports in using my body for these particular sports. What have you found beneficial when it comes to the getting in the, the weight room and getting into the gym a little bit to work on some of these things for your sports? I found it very, like more, more recently, like I started during COVID, I started lifting more like I did before, but I started doing it more seriously during COVID. So I, after going to practice, like after lifting and getting my body more used to lifting and it changing from that and getting more muscle, I would, I saw in the softball field, like when I was making contact, it was more effort, effortless, like swinging and the ball was still going as far. And I was like, okay, I'm getting muscles. All right. And then in basketball, like doing like squats and like um, squatting and with the weights and I like just sliding, like before my legs would be like a little bit sore and I'm like, okay, like I know I need to get my legs stronger. And then just finally doing it, like I can like slide down the whole court and then my legs are fine. And like my quads aren't burning the whole time. Like they were like six months ago or something. 
and oh wait no like a year ago we've been in quarantine for almost a year but <laughs> yeah so that just weightlifting helps so if anyone's watching i recommend it yes <laughs> and, and, and right time goes by fast so you can say oh it was six months ago no it's actually a year uh yeah <laughs> time goes by quick the thing about it though what do you notice about your body and let's let's break that down even further because there's some things that you know that hey i know i'm weak here i know i need to emphasize this more in certain training that I use, upper body or lower body. Interestingly though, basketball is gonna be more cardio, it's gonna be more of legs, it's gonna be more because it keeps going. You're, you're, it's nonstop, yeah. defense to offense, transition, defense, transition offense, running, jumping, a lot of agility. With softball, there's some time there that you're waiting for the pitch. The pitcher's getting in your <laughs> yeah. like to do. They got their own little mojo. They love to like, you know, touch a little sand, a uh, little, little uh, dirt. Oh, like the fingers. Ball, the, <laughs> whatever it is, right? Uh, yeah. Pound the mat, the mitt. Uh, so yeah. there's those things that, that take time and you're, you're standing, but you're still observant, right? So yeah. there's, there's different things with that. So break it down with the kind of thing for your body. What do you have to do? What are you focusing on? to build more specifically for me for basketball it's always been my legs I'm six foot I'm very skinny so just and really bony so like gaining muscle and more weight has always been like since I was like 10 since I told my parents I want to play college basketball that's they're like okay like you might not like this but you, you're gonna have to have this like you're going to, you need to gain more weight. You have to be stronger in your legs and your core. Like in softball, you have to be very strong with your core and balance. And actually the fact that you mentioned um, like running in basketball, but not so much in softball, since our AAU team, we're, we're so close, Lady Hoyas. And I'll come back from a practice and then like, it's like a running joke. Like my coach would be like, oh, you're tired. It's because of softball. And like, even, even the girls are like, oh, she was at softball practice. That's why she's tired. And it's just like a running joke with that. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I think you've found improvement in that. So you found improvement, upper body, lower body, emphasizing some yeah. of those things of way uh, that you're doing different um, exercises for your muscles, correct? Yeah. And like in, like, I feel like softball is a little bit more upper body than it is, I mean, Obviously, you do need your lower body, but they also focus on upper body more than basketball does. And I've seen some things like, like me and my best friend like play basketball together. So, like we'll be we'll be talking, and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, I could do this." She's like, "You could do that." I'm like, "Yeah, because we do this in softball." And she's like, "Oh, the softball, okay." She's like, "Maybe I should start doing your workouts and stuff." I'm like, "Hey, you can join me." I mean, she does join me sometimes, and I'm like, "Yeah, let's go." Like. <laughs> This is fun. Hey, yeah, you got to find a workout partner, right? I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah, a partner. That's a great thing. You talk. You touched yeah. on Lady Hoya's uh, AAU basketball team. How? How? What are these girls like? And and what is it like with these coaches? They've been very instrumental in your development. Tell me how. Oh yes. Yeah. So Lady Hoya's. I've been playing. I've been training with the head coach. Um, his name is Bob. Um, I've been training with him since I was eight. And every year that I trained with him until I was, I think, I think I started playing AAU with him when I was 11. I played the year before with a different team because we were trying to get a Hoyas team together, but we just didn't have enough girls. And um, when I, I was in sixth grade when, so yeah, like 11. And like, just when we finally got a team, everyone that tried out was so amazing so nice and just the ones that we finally got on the team we have like a core five that have been there from the start we call it we call us the ogs <laughs> and we're all so close we ended up going to high school freshman year like all together except one person but we still love her obviously and when we played them it was so so much fun because we were playing against each other and it was great and just the whole just the whole organization we're all a family like we like we call we call each other Hoya's family and 
there's a boy side too. We're all, we're just all family. And our coaches, they're like other parents to us. My best friend's mother is one of the assistant coaches. She's like my basketball mom. Um, every every coach, any team, any person, we're just all family. At school, we'll just walk by. We all have like the same backpack. We're like, hey, what's up? You guys got a game this weekend? You guys got practice? And just everyone. I want to tell you, this is a fantastic team. We're so close. And I love these girls. Like, they're my own sisters. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I mean, really, when you look at it, too, it's family. It's another extension of family. <laughs> Uh, and, and and you rally around each other as student athletes. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, with, with your sports, uh, uh, being softball and basketball, um, you didn't get much of a season, you know, because you were a freshman. Now you're going to be a sophomore. We had to deal with COVID. What are you trying to get out of out of out of these sports? And it looks like you're leaning to, to one of them for by, you know, by example, you're leaning to one of them to choose uh, what you want to do full time. So what do, what do you want to get out of this, out of the, you, know, you got sophomore, junior, and senior year. Uh, what are you trying to get out of that, that sport and, and how you can improve? So for basketball, I've been talking to a few schools. And when I, I always knew since I was young, I wanted to go to college. And I've always loved basketball and softball. And I, when I was younger, I knew about scholarships. And then I found out I could get one for the sports I loved. And I was like, I could get a scholarship, free school for a sport I love and play it at a high level. Like that would be amazing. Like just imagine, imagine that. And since then, since I found that out, it's always been a goal of mine. And I told my my grandfather um, and he, I think he was one of the first people I told. And he was like, okay, bet. Like we're, we're gonna do this. And I think the first school I really wanted to go to was Cal Berkeley and um, all the time my dad would take me to games there and I'm I'm like eight years old like yeah <laughs> like just in the stands and just all the time just <laughs> yeah, well, well your grandfather he took a, he took time that's the first of all I like about that he took time to take you to those games that makes an impression to a student athlete at a young age uh, before they're even a student athlete it's just they're young they attend games they remember that so it's it these certain schools do stand out uh you know even for softball or basketball either way um does it get competitive though between these sports i mean girls do get competitive don't they oh yes it, it does get very competitive like there's been times in school sports especially last year um there's i have a lot of close friends because all most of our Hoya girls went to high school together and they'd be like hey so-and-so's talking smack about you I'm like okay just like all right like they're like she doesn't even come to this because she's at this sport and then this and she still makes this team I'm like okay I'm like guys it, it's 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 high school we're freshmen like it's not none of us have offers right now it shouldn't be that competitive I'm like I never did anything you guys Right. Like, come on. I mean, how, how much does peer pressure fall into? How do you handle peer pressure when you look at maybe something being said and how you go about handling it? Because uh, sometimes people feel, you know, hey, eye for an eye. Some people feel that way. Uh, some student athletes. But again, you also have to look at who you are, your character, how you want to represent yourself. How does Ariana Silva handle moments like that where peer pressure and it can come from all different angles and distractions. Check me out. How yeah. I always, if, if someone's like talking about me, I always try to see the positive in things. So like, I'll be like, oh, they're probably just having a bad day or something. And then I never take anything like that. Like I make fun of myself all the time. So like ever since I grew up and I just anything, I, I just make fun of myself all the time. I'll fall in the middle of the street and be like, did anyone get that on camera? Tell me like stuff like that. And when it comes to also like peer pressure and things that people like that things people do and they want me to do it I feel I'm pretty good with like saying like no I can't do that and sports have helped me so much in that I could be like oh no I can't and like if I don't want to seem like for someone saying like oh try a drug or something like I could be like oh no I have a game this weekend we might get drug tested like if I don't want to seem like a wimp or something so then that that helps so much and it's like 
it's good to also have sports as like not an excuse because like obviously I don't want to try like even if I did didn't do sports then I wouldn't want to because that's not why but that just having sports is a good like can't do that got a sport <laughs> well, well, you're, you're wanting to 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 make sure you're performing at the highest level possible and so you yeah. want a substance to kind of interrupt that uh to make it to where it, it affects your training uh it affects your mind in in the training because you need both yeah. you need your body you need your mental part of the uh, of your mind to to really get through things and to battle through things to uh, again, there's adversities that, that individuals and student athletes go through. So, no, that's true. Uh, handling peer pressure in that way is, and you got an out. You say, I'm an, I'm a student athlete. Yeah. And I got a game. I can't do that. Yeah. That makes it possible. You know, and there's an aspect of, of you know, we've heard a coach say this before too, uh, about the aspect of, of dating and when it comes to the, the other individuals, you know, that try to talk to you and, 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 and yeah. as a dual sport and, a, and academics, that's a lot. That's an added thing to kind of uh, manage, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, life. So how do you look at relationships of that uh, to keep things, you know, so you're focused on what you need to do? Thankfully, um, actually just got out of a relationship. Um, but thankfully, the person that I was with was very understanding with everything. And um, like, understood my goals that every anytime I talk to someone, I'm like, these are my goals. And if I'm with you, I may not be able to give you my full attention all the time. I'm always at these practices. I'm not on my phone that much. I have things I want to do. So I will give you time when I can. And, and ev everyone I've talked to has been very respectful about that. So I've been very, like I said, everyone I surround myself with, I'm very thankful for other people in my life. So that just all that just helps. And them being very understanding about my goals and also pushing me. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I have this assignment. It's due tomorrow though. I won't do it today. I'll, I'll do it in the morning. And they're like, no, do it right now. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> well, and, and there's, there's this thing called uh, sacrifices. And you have to sacrifice sometimes other relationships that, that you, that maybe want to get together with you and you kind of have to yeah. sort of here. And you're a very confident person, Ariana. And you say, <laughs> oh, hey, this is what I have on my plate. Either you fit yeah. or part of this or you, you fit, in, you're a piece of it or mm -hmm. I, this isn't going to work. I, Cause I don't have the time to manage something else when there are to be clear, more important things. I, I, I guess what I can say is that is, is not to say a person's not important, but I have goals, yeah. I have things I need to reach first. Uh, and yeah. then worry about that because I think that's hard for a young person to understand is that yeah. you want to get those things done. And then I can have a little extra time to worry about and manage a relationship. Right. Exactly. Like there's so many, not really so many people, but there's been a few people recently where I'm like, it's the right the right person just the wrong time and like that I feel like a lot more recently too that has been happening a lot and I'm like dang but I have my goals and they have their goals and now we're just we're chilling trying to achieve those as like friends and stuff and I'm like I'm cool with that totally, totally. I bottled this though <laughs> <laughs> She's observant look at this folks uh, Ariana is very observant when things fall around her she notices <laughs> So don't think she doesn't notice. But with sports coming up, what are your goals you're wanting to get out of both of these sports? Uh, let's take a look at that. I I just want to play, honestly. Like that just playing. If if I play and a coach is like, I like the way she plays, I want her on my team, I'm gonna give her a scholarship. That that's how I look at it. I'm not trying to yes, I will obviously be flexible. And if you want me, I could change things and work to what you want and need. But if I, wherever I go and however my playing style, I want the coach to be like, okay, she thrives in this. So I want her because she thrives in this, not because, oh, she could do this and then like try to mold or just 
put like you know those baby toys with like the circle and then like the star and then you have to put the, the circle. Yeah, there you go. You're right. Like that. Like those things. Like I want somewhere where I fit and I know I fit and my definition of family before people that are gonna push me. I've talked to a school once and they said, Yeah, people want family, but they want Thanksgiving family when everyone's so happy. They don't want all the other days of the year when yeah, I have to get on you because of this and I want the actual 365 days a year or days a year family, not just the holiday family. Correct. You want more. Uh, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Uh, we always feel that the, you, we want to empower the student athlete. And so getting the student athlete in a position of, of ma- managing what they do, how they do it. Uh, again, working though with coaches and, and, and doing that. Uh, yeah. That, that's big. Uh, I know a state title has to be on your mind at some point. If it's AAU Lady Hoyas or if it's Pittsburgh <laughs> High School, I mean, the alum, uh, your parents went there, grandparents went there. So to experience that somewhere between your sophomore, junior, and senior year, I know you're looking forward to that. I am, actually. Um, it's crossed my mind a few times, but in the... I always, it's kind of kind of a fault in me too. I look too ahead. So I'm always looking, in my mind, yes, I'm looking to go to college, but I'm also looking what my job is going to be. That in the long forecasting. run. Forecasting. You're forecasting ahead. Forecasting. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. And so like, there's been a few times where my friends have mentioned, I'm like, oh yeah, we could do that. I'm in high school right now. Why am I thinking about what I'm going to do when I'm 30? Like, So that has crossed my mind and yeah it would be obviously hecka cool and it obviously I'm gonna try to work and I'm gonna try to get my team to both of my uh, Pittsburgh and Lady Hoyas teams I want both of us to I haven't really met any of the Pittsburgh girls yet because I'm new to the school and we haven't started the season but the ones that I did meet they're all great people and I would love for them to get the state title and obviously same thing with my Lady Hoyas. Even if even if their school makes it, I will be just as excited because those are my sisters. That's powerful. So. Love that. We we love that. Well, I tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you, Adriana Silva. You know, class of 2023, Pittsburgh High School, California, uh, softball, uh, pitcher in first base, uh, guard in basketball, Lady Hoyas AAU, 3.3 GPA. I know you're looking to improve that GPA though, right, Ariana? Oh, yes. I'm taking AP classes next year. So, Ooh. excited for that. <laughs> yes. So, that's going to be interesting to juggle all that academically. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on our show, but we're not done. We have this thing called the Quick Blitz. This is something you're not aware of that we are going to get into some things on a personal level with you so we get to know Adriana Silva in a better way, in a personal way. Ooh. People want to get to know <laughs> right? People are just, you know, they want to get to know who you are. Favorite food, Ariana? Mac and cheese. <laughs> um, okay. I love mac and cheese. Well, I bet you do. Uh, it, but it's not the craft box. <laughs> I love any mac and cheese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have like three craft boxes in my okay, there hey, pantry. Hey, hey. She, she's not, she's not, hey. She's not picky. <laughs> picky. Um, <laughs> A favorite dessert? Ooh, chocolate chip cookies or my Nina makes very good snickerdoodles. Ooh, snickerdoodles, yum. They're delicious. Okay. A favorite musical artist if you had to pick one? I know there's many, but one. Right now, I listen to a lot of music. That is very hard. Um, Probably J. Cole. I mean, I have a J. Cole poster right there. Wow, okay. So. All right. <laughs> J. Cole's good. He's good. He's got tracks. Right. Hot tracks. Yeah. That's a more recent person, though. I have, like, Tupac right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, yeah. That, it, it impacts big time on, on the music industry. Definitely. Yeah. And lost at an early age. Both him and mm-hmm. Tori's D.I.G. So, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's look at... Apple or Android and why? Apple, because all my friends have it and I like to FaceTime. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and the secret is out on the street that Anthony, your dad, and we're trying to get him involved in Apple News. So he's he's hooked up to that end phone yet still. But Yeah. We'll we'll get him we'll get him there soon. <laughs> uh for you, what's your favorite uh basketball shoe to wear? And, and we'll talk basketball shoe and cleat to wear. Wanna see my shoes? Bring them to me. Let's see. Okay. They're under my bed. They're so amazing. I love these shoes with all my heart. I keep them in the box, too. <laughs> They're the SpongeBob Kyries. Oh, <laughs> no way. Not everybody could get those. Okay. So I have a very small foot. So I was walking after a fantastic game. I was at a mall and, um, I was in my uniform still, and I was walking by a kid's Foot Locker, and I see them. I'm like, "Yo, Dad!" I was like, "Those are the those are the shoes I want." And he was like, "Really?" And we looked online, and they were like very expensive. And I was like, "Yeah, no, I got these for $110. <laughs> They're kid sizes. Kid sizes. There you go. That's so that those those are my favorite. I haven't." Like I needed basketball shoes to wear outside, and my dad's like, "Just wear those." I'm like, "No, I'm not wearing them outside. <laughs> like, never catch me with those outside." Favorite cleat to wear? Softball. Ooh. <laughs> I I think my cleats are in my brother's car, so I can't show those right now. Um, <laughs> I think they're Mizuno. I don't know exactly what they are, but they're Mizuno, uh, and they're white and gray. Yep. Which is so nice. Um. If you could travel to a favorite destination spot in the world, where would that be? Um, you better take outside the game. Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you can come. Um, does it have to be somewhere I've been before? It can be somewhere you've been before where you've liked, but just a place, a favorite place you'd love to be in the world. I kind of have two places. One person I have, one person, one place I haven't been, and one place I have. So one is in Mexico. I have not been to Mexico. Um, my family is actually from there. My great grandma is out there, and my grandpa has a house out there that he built. And I've never been there, and I'm very mad about that. Um, <laughs> and I want to go so badly. And so that's a place I want to go, but I haven't. But a place I love is New York. If there's one thing you could choose that you could have an impact on, you could change, Ariana, what would that be? Why? Probably people's love for everyone and having compassion and empathy. Because I feel like a lot of people in this, during this time are more thinking about themselves more than everyone else. And that, that's something that, yes, you do need to focus on yourself, but you also have to be there for people around you. If you see, obviously, someone walking down the street not having a good day, or you're just riding your bike and someone's just sitting there just, like crying, you're not just gonna ride past them. Like, right. you wanna stop and talk to them. And because you, if you were in that situation, you would want someone else to do that for you. And I feel like also a lot during COVID, obviously with the, Black Lives Matter movement and stuff. I I hate racism so much. I don't even know why. I don't. How is it a thing? I don't understand. But I just want people to show so much love for each other. Like, no matter what ethnicity, um, who you love, who, what religion, just anything. Like, just love people and just be a good person. Would you prefer your Kyrie's Ooh. with a blemish, say they ripped? Or would you prefer to be on outside the game show? On the show. <laughs> no, no, that's right. That's right. Class of 2023, dual sport athlete. Follow her. Basketball, uh, so softball, first base, pitcher, guard in basketball. Lady Hoyas, AAU, Pittsburgh High School, 3.3 GPA. Class of 2023, Ediana, it's been a pleasure to have you on our show and talk to you. Good to know you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Oh, wonderful. I hope you had a lot of fun too. We try to make it fun. I did. This is fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope you have a great one, okay? You take care.
You too. Thank you so much. This is Savannah Gemelo, and you've been watching Outside the Games with your host, Kevin Menton.